I feel like they're an incredibly rare sight, but occasionally, once in a blue moon at night, you'll see a car speed past with green lights on the top. I think it's fair to say that most people will associate flashing blue and red lights with the police, probably flashing blue lights with something like an ambulance or an emergency response vehicle, usually transporting paramedics or other healthcare professionals to an emergency to a site where they're needed. Because fundamentally, these green lights are usually attached to the top of a doctor's car, but does having green lights on the top of your car provide you with any road privileges or rights that you wouldn't otherwise have? For example, can a doctor with green lights on their car drive through a set of red lights to reach the site of an emergency faster? Well, the simple answer is no. The original purpose of the green lights when they were first introduced for doctors, informing other road users of their presence and effectively requesting that they not be obstructed if they've got somewhere important to be. Secondly is that it acts as a safety light at the scene of an emergency. Oftentimes these are not very well lit and you may only have the light of your emergency vehicles of these flashing lights there to illuminate the whole scene. And then thirdly, in an emergency, it's to alert the other emergency services that are present that a doctor's car specifically is approaching. If you've got a cordon, which is meant to block traffic, and you see a random motorist approaching that you don't recognize, you won't be let through. Whereas if it's clear that it's a doctor on the approach that's coming to help out, then they will part and let them through. But coming back to the central question, a green light on top of their car gives the doctor driving no extra privileges or protections under the Road Traffic Act. So they cannot drive through red lights, they cannot break the speed limit or overtake other vehicles simply for the sake of reaching an emergency site sooner, for the simple reason that it's going to place other road users in danger. Ambulance drivers, for example, who drive with blue flashing lights often have very specific training that allows them to safely drive at high speeds and, if necessary, do things like go through red lights. Not only that, but from their experience, they will likely have heightened awareness of the road that most road users don't have and the relevant protections under legislation. But with all that out of the way, there is an interesting side to this that I thought I might discuss with you, which is something called BASICS, the British Association for Immediate Care. And this is a scheme that was formed in 1977. To keep things really, really simple and <laughs> superficial, BASICS is a scheme that allows doctors, like GPs for example, to form part of their local emergency services response network. They carry a pager that is only active at certain times, depending on the voluntary contract that they hold, but it does mean that they can be alerted if there is an emergency nearby. And the reason I'm discussing it in the context of this video is that BASICS doctors are exactly the sort of group that this would apply to, and the most common that use green lights in practice. However, some BASICS doctors with specific approvals from their local police force can actually apply to put blue lights on the top of their car and drive with a siren just like any other emergency response vehicle. So just to wrap things up, BASICS doctors are doctors that have completed their foundation training, their F1 and their F2 after medical school, and have then started training in any one of a number of specialties that is compatible with acute care in these sorts of pre-hospital emergency environments. Examples might be things like general practice, Practice, acute medicine, emergency medicine, intensive care medicine. And the idea is that it allows you to get a doctor to the scene of an emergency to deploy either interventions or medications or other procedures that would not normally be possible until you got that person to hospital. They can do them at the roadside. So to me, just as someone on the outside, it looks like a really cool program and potential career option for those people that do want a bit of that high adrenaline community serving pre-hospital emergency response type action in their lives without necessarily wanting to train purely in emergency medicine or indeed those people who do want to train in these hyper acute specialties and give back to their community and practice medicine outside the hospital setting. It could be a really interesting career opportunity if you're interested in that sort of thing. Thanks very much for watching guys. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe and don't forget to go and check out my website olieburton.com. Take care and I'll see you next time.